What's going on guys, Dan here with the Regular Guy Garage. I want to go over really quick where we're at with the LS build. As you can see in the title, my 10 year old son is actually building this engine. He's building it with me. I'm doing more of the advanced things on the engine which are more critical. However, there is things that he can do on this build and that's what I'm going to have him do. As I said in one of my previous videos, my son really loves this stuff and he wants to do it. So I'm going to have him do as much as he possibly can. So uh, let's go ahead and check out some of the progress that we made so far. All right guys, so the first thing that I put in the engine from the bare block is actually the camshaft. The reason I do that is because the crankshaft's not in, none of the pistons and rods are in. I can get my hand down here and guide the, the camshaft into each bearing. Yeah, I could, after everything's in, slip it in from the front, but honestly, it's easier this way, so why not just do it from the start? So this is kind of just the way on these V8, these V-series engines that I've always done the cam. Uh, when I start from the bare block, I do. You take it and rub it around here. Alright, so before you stick the camshaft in the engine, you have to make sure you pre-lube it. I had my son put some lube on the cam bearings also. This way, the cam can just go ahead and slip right through. So I went ahead and picked up a new thrust plate. Uh, you could probably reuse the old one. I picked up a new one just because, I mean, it had the new gasket, plus uh, the old one was kind of rusty and stuff. Go ahead and clean the, the surface area, at least where the gasket goes. I'm gonna wipe down just the rest of it also, just make sure the lube stays on the cam. So I'm not torquing them down yet. After I, after I torque each bolt, I mark them. So I know they aren't torqued because I haven't marked it yet. So when I go back through and torque everything down, I'll know to torque these and then mark them. That's why I'm not torquing them right now. We're just tightening it to get them in. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do, which I normally probably wouldn't do until later, but because I still am waiting on the crankshaft, uh, I have some time. Uh, so I'm gonna put the lifters, we're gonna put the lifters and the lifter trays in. Luckily with these LS engines, once the lifters go in, they have trays which kind of which keep them in so I can actually rotate the engine over and stuff and they won't fall out, which is nice. So it's just something to do for now. We're gonna go ahead and slide each of them in. So whenever you do a cam swap, you wanna do new lifters. Well, honestly, what I'm an advocate for, if the lifters ever come out of the holes that they're in, I just change them right there uh, for new ones. And it, one thing is, with new lifters, you want to give them an oil bath. Otherwise, when you first start the car, the, the thing's going to be knocking like crazy because you have to wait for these to fill up with oil. They've been in oil for about 30 minutes or so, uh, so these should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and throw them in the engine.
All right, again, I'm only snugging these for now. All right, so you can't see his face, but this is my son. He watched and kind of helped me do the other side. He's gonna do this side by himself. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some um, connecting rods and pistons together. And one thing to note, um, when you're putting rods together is rod orient rods and pistons together is the rod orientation. Now a lot of guys will probably, you know, if say you pull out the rod and you don't know which way it goes, the crank, the, with these aftermarket rods and with most rods in general, so there's a flat side and then there's a chamfered side. So this, this angled cut right here, I don't know if you can see that. So this angled cut right here is gonna to go towards the counterweight on the crankshaft. So the orientation of these connecting rods, the way it's gonna go is, you're gonna have the, have the chamfered side facing the counterweight, so you'll have one facing this way, and then the other one is gonna face the other way. So it's important to note the orientation of the connecting rod because when you put like these, so when you put your rods and pistons together, you have them you have them all correct so this way you get the valve reliefs up and in the right direction. So with these particular pistons you have two we have a clip which goes into the end of the piston, then the pin will slide through the piston and the rod and then and then you got another clip to lock lock it in. All right, so as you guys can see, we got the camshaft installed, we got the lifters installed, the lifter trays. So we haven't gotten the crankshaft back yet, which is why the crank, the rods and the pistons aren't in, but we can still put the crank in, we can still put these lifters in because the trays hold them in. So there were a couple little things that I could do with him over the weekend and we wanted to take advantage of that. So I went ahead and did that. Um, also, as you can see, I started putting the pistons together, the rods and pistons. They're not ringed yet, but as you can see behind me, I started getting the rods and the pistons. Um, seven out of the eight are together, but I have one more left to get done. And, uh, and then, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, once I get this crankshaft back, which is looking like tomorrow, fingers crossed, if it's not, we'll hopefully later on this week. But in the meantime, stuff that I wasn't videoing, I got a lot of the parts cleaned up, painted up, so everything's going to look nice and fresh when it's inside the new engine, when it's inside the engine bay. Um, stuff that's not really too exciting, so I'm not going to video it. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching me and my son out there, you know, just doing a couple little things on the engine. Uh, like I said, where we're at next, waiting for the crankshaft. Once I get that back, we can start putting these, we can start ringing these pistons and then put the crank in, obviously. Make sure everything is good with the crank, it spins freely, it has enough clearance, and then we'll go ahead and start dropping uh, rods and pistons in. And then after that, I mean, it's gonna come together really quick. 
But aside from that, I want to talk about my 2017 Camaro. I know a lot of guys have probably subscribed to my channel from seeing that uh, whip, the Whipple Supercharger installed on it. And I want to talk about where I'm going with that next. So if you kind of haven't guessed, the reason why I was looking for an LS engine to build is to kind of get some experience with the LS engine. I've never built an LS engine before, and I know a lot of things haven't changed over the years. Obviously, the LS1 and the, L the Gen 5 LT uh, style engines are going to be different, but there are a lot of similarities with them. So the reason why I wanted to build this LS engine first was to get a little bit of experience before I yank the LT1 out of my Camaro to do stronger rods and pistons, camshaft, heads, all that good stuff. So if you are subscribed to my channel to see that, there that will be coming, okay? I didn't put the whip I didn't put the whipple on just to put the whipple on and call it a day. For now, yes, so I can, you know, drive it. I drive it almost daily now. We are going to I am doing rods and pistons, at least dropping pistons, but I would like to do rods also. I I will be doing a camshaft, will be doing heads, will be doing fuel system. Clutch will probably come with that. Obviously, a lot of these things cost money and I have to wait to save up for it too. Also, I plug my Instagram every time. Uh, if you guys are on Instagram, go ahead and follow me at Regular Guy Garage. I'll drop a link in the description below. I'll also drop a link in the description for the rods and the pistons that I ordered for this thing. These are scat rods, and these are Molly pistons, or Mall, Mall, I don't know, however you pronounce it. But it is a forge setup. It is good for, they rate it at 700. Uh, I believe they rate it at 700, so we'll at least be in that range. Someone did ask on the last one if I gap the piston rings when I did gap them what I gap them for and just to give you guys a hint I gapped the piston ring to withstand a 200 plus shot of nitrous so that means we can spray over 200 so anyway guys I hope you like this video I hope everyone had a great 4th of July weekend if you like what you see be sure to subscribe if you like the video be sure to give it a like too take care and we'll see you on the next one